Hey there, it's Joy Foster, founder of Tech Pixies and the host of the Sparkle and Thrive podcast. And I am really excited today to be interviewing Tamsin Napier Munn, someone who I have known for a long time and who's been close to the Tech Pixies journey uh, really since the beginning. And a couple of years ago, Tamsin came on to the podcast. She came into an event that we did and she told her story. And we decided that it would be a really good idea to update that story and see where she's at now and what she's up to. So Tamsin, over to you. When you first came to talk to us, it was at the Be, the Be Brave and Sparkle Winter Festival. And this is the last event we had in person. Uh, and I believe that was in 2018. It feels like it was forever ago with COVID and everything else. So um, tell us, give us an update on your story. I, I, kind of for people who uh, haven't heard the story previously and tell us a little bit more about you and, and why you're <laughs> such an important part in, uh, in, in the Be Brave world for us. Okay, well, it's my story is is about, I suppose this, the biggest thing I've ever struggled with is confidence. So be brave, um, be bold, be better is a, perhaps my mo mantra, my motto as well. And I've spent the last seven years, uh, if you like, really pivoting into um, breaking free from self-limitations and really kind of smashing through a lot of my fears um, and in doing so in hopefully inspiring other women to do the same so I start, set up Raw Talks Academy uh, about three years ago was it three years ago I've lost you know track of time because of COVID three years ago for that very reason through my own experiences of what I have the strategies that I have discovered that have helped me and have helped so many other women as well so to kind of backtrack I mean yes we've known each other a few years and uh, that was perhaps the beginning of my journey for, I'd say recovery, but to, to transformation, really. I've been through uh, a lot of stuff in my life, as so many people have. And I guess they say that, you know, you are where you are because of the, the, the people that you associate with and the things that you've achieved or not achieved and the challenges. So, um, yes, my, my struggle with confidence is the thing that has ignited me to to do what I'm doing with Raw Talks Academy and that really stemmed from a very early age of not really having a voice and um, of having a very dysfunctional abusive family uh, environment which uh, then kind of got me into all sorts of difficulties when I was a teenager and early years in my 20s and I was lost I was a very lost soul and I found myself in situations where I really undervalued myself all the time. My self-esteem was in the gutter. And I think we sort of, uh, uh, and, and I can relate to so many stories of other women and men for that matter, who've also suffered uh, abuse and, and trauma. So I've lived my life, if you like, in a, in a state of, of red alert, trauma, anxiety. And, and as time went on, and I, I won't sort of fill in the gaps of all, my whole journey but I was in sales from about 19 I found my my niche if you like that I could communicate with people I could persuade people and I really enjoyed it I never saw myself as being a woman being an issue around that so I used my femininity if you like in a man's world of in IT in the first years of IT in the 90s to, to sell and I did really well so I never thought of anything else but the circumstances changed, Joy, and as with everything, you know, if the foundations are based on rocky, well, you, you're, you're building something on rocky foundations, the cracks will start to show, the mortar started to come apart. And after uh, a difficult time with divorce, and, you know, I think my nervous system just gave way and I completely fell apart and had what they commonly know as a nervous breakdown. I was on the, I was on my, on my knees really. And it was then when I think you come, you know, you've either get, get up, you get bitter or better. <laughs> you know, you can either um, move forward or you can allow it to consume you. And I had really no choice. I have a son at that time was much younger and I had a mouth to feed. I had a, you know, rent to pay or rather a mortgage to pay and bills to pay. And, you know, scrabbling around for pennies where I had no money coming in because I couldn't function uh, in the bottom of my handbag, if anybody else has done that, or just knowing, wondering where the next penny was going to come from. You know, it's quite a scary place to be. So I remember launching myself out of my chair 
at a point at which I was um, literally at rock bottom and rocking backwards and forwards in my chair in the sitting room and thinking, what on earth do I do next? And I literally launched myself. I don't know what possessed me. I didn't know. I was like, I was leaving my body. And I picked up the phone to um, the managing director at the time, David Murray, the business magazine. I'd known him for a number of years and said, David, I think I can help. It was my sales hat came on. And I really, it was almost like I was watching this person do this because my head um, was so scrambled but something in my heart said, do it. So I got up and did it. And I say the rest is history, but that was one of those sliding doors moments. You know what I mean? When, if you've ever watched the film, although it ends tragically in both times, but it, you know, the, the, the doors, you can take a few seconds to literally ch change the trajectory of your life if you make a decision and act on the instinct. And so that was really perhaps the, the starting point of really launching my new career at this tender age of 50 something. And I have to say that that kind of is at the back of my mind a lot of the time and with so many other women who, who in their 50 plus time through menopause, how, how one's confidence can also be affected so much. And I, I went through all of that at the same time. So I wasn't sure whether this nervous um, you know, breakdown was to do with my divorce, menopause or something else. Anyway, all I knew was, was I had to do something. So well, I, I, I just want to pause you there for a second, because this is so important, this concept of what do I do, right? And, and it's, it's, it's understanding that there's always a step you can take. There's always something you can do. And I think that is a, a concept um, that I've really started to understand the last few years. Uh, and really started to employ as well uh, in my own life. And the, 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 the difference between the person sitting in the rocking chair thinking about all the problems and the person sitting in the rocking chair thinking about what the solution might be mm -hmm. is that a, there, is a, there is always a solution to every problem that we have, every problem that we face, there is always a solution. You know, the, the ability for the light bulb existed, it just took a thousand tries to figure out how to do it. You know, the ability to fly a plane existed, it just took the Wright brothers to figure out how to do it. Yeah. You know, the ability to go to the moon worked out as long as we figured out how to do it. The point is, is that there's a solution for absolutely every problem someone is facing. It's just which rocking chair are they in? Are they in the rocking chair that's going that's just focused and fixated on the problem? Or are they in, in the rocking chair that says, let's figure out a solution. What's the next step? What's the step I take? What's the one step I can do right now? And that's your five, four, three, two, one, pick up the phone, yeah. Yeah. right? Uh, so I just completely. wanna highlight, I wanna highlight that for you because I think, um, and you probably all know it, know it, but I also wanna just pause and take the 30,000 30, foot view for our listeners because I want them to really understand that you chose to be in a rocking chair thinking about a solution rather than to choose to be in a rocking chair steaming on what was not working. And I think that, that, in, that. you mm -hmm. can't find the solution in a frame of mind that comes out of anxiety, frustration, and fear. You can only come up with the solution when you come out of a place of what would I love? Where would I love to be? What would I love? You know, and for you, it was like, I, it was, some of it was out of necessity, right? For your family, but also- yeah. You got the idea to move forwards, not because you were dwelling on what wasn't working, but you were dwelling on what's the next step that I could take. So I just I want to really applaud you for that, because that is a brave move. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, you've said lots of things that are absolutely so, so on point, Joy. You know, I call it mind judo. So one of the things I coined was this idea of mind judo. It's a mindset. We can either go down a rabbit hole of catastrophizing everything, which takes us on what I call this, this runaway train, which often I was on, which meant that although I was trying to, I was very positive, it would be the what ifs, the what ifs. And when we are in our head and we're trying to answer our own questions, we don't have the answers, we can catastrophize. So we know there's this runaway train, we know it's out of control, um, but we need to jump the tracks. You know, and to be able to jump the tracks, we need to shift our mind. I to call it mind judo because it is like a game of judo, a, a match. 
you watch judo in action, it is that kind of least resistance. As soon as you, you kind of flip it on its back, you can, you can change direction of your mind. And it starts with a thought, as we know, the law of attraction then tells us that we, we will get what we focus on. So if we're looking for brown cars, we'll see brown cars. If we're looking for a solution, we'll find a solution. But the key is action. You know, it is, we will never build confidence and courage in our heads. It comes from action. And that's the most courageous thing we can ever do. It's that first few seconds. We call it the three, two, one, the sod it button now. Some people coin it something else, but I call it the sod it button. It's sod it. And that's instinctively what I did. I listened to my heart, not my head, and found the courage in a few seconds to launch myself out of that, rather than what often I know so many of us do is dwell. This has to do what you're talking about is noticing what you're noticing. It has to do awareness. With, yeah, it has to do with consciously noticing what the subconscious is doing, right? So 90% of what we do is on autopilot is on subconscious. 90% of the time, most people would sit down and just dwell on all the problems because that's yeah. what your subconscious does. So when you become a conscious person, a con you you start living consciously, you you go you notice what you're noticing. You go, oh, I'm going down the rabbit hole. Oh, I don't want to be going down the rabbit hole. Let's change the let's change the conversation in my head. And mm -hmm. the very first place that you can change your conversation is in your thoughts. And those thoughts, and I would highly recommend, I mean, you didn't do it in this case, but yeah. when I coach people, I say, get the thoughts out on paper. These are called your automatic negative thoughts, your ants get the ants out on paper because what like they that. do it's like a snowball it just it gets bigger and bigger and bigger yeah. and bigger unless you get it out of your head and great questions you can ask yourself is what's the worst that can happen what's the best that can yeah. happen you know you, you're going to call this guy you're going to tell him you've got an idea the worst thing that can happen is he's going to say i'm not interested the best yeah. thing he's going to say is when can you start you know yeah. so i but totally. but the, the first step, like you said, is notice what you're noticing is to consciously work out what your subconscious is doing automatically. And that's just being aware of your thoughts. Most yeah. people are not aware of their thoughts. Most people run on autopilot. And the yeah. very first step you can do is to be aware of what you're thinking. And like you said, it's like you watch this other person do it, even though it was your own body. It's like, just being aware of your thoughts is the first piece of the puzzle and then making a decision about what you're going to do with those thoughts is the next piece of the puzzle. Yeah. And action third. So it happens in a split second, literally a few seconds. And this is where I'm so, so, so passionate about what I discovered and it's been coined somewhere else. And I know Mel Robbins talks about the five second rule. I, I think about the three seconds because I read and read that book and I've listened to it so many times, but I recognize that I could talk myself out of anything in five seconds. Yeah. But actually in three gives you less time. And you think about on your marks, get set, go. You know, we see it everywhere. It's actually a really good metacognition tool. But, you know, you talk about, you know, we, we can change our thoughts, being awake to our thoughts, being aware and awake, being present. The moment we absolutely understand what our mind is saying is a what if get our ants out there but get our what ifs and I know so many of us have a bad case of the what ifs and instead of going what if I teach people to use the three two one you're aware of that noise of what if is immediately flipping it into a well what and I'll give you an example um you know I'm in the process of buying a property at the moment and it's taken seven months so far and I'm so there's a little voice in me going what if it doesn't go through what if and of course I can go down this rabbit hole of worry and anxiety and tip me over but what I'm saying to myself I catch myself and I ask myself well, well what if it does go through so immediately I'm looking up I'm looking forward I'm looking what if it does go through what if it does what then and so I'm immediately shifting the focus and I'm perhaps finding the solutions to how it can. So, yeah, I think we're talking the same language, different metaphors, different analogies, but really very, very powerful. And I talk about this action, Joy, because sometimes we have to act before we change our thoughts, because action, our physiology will change our psychology. You know, if we move into action, I mean, try it. You know, when I get people to 
I say get people, I encourage people to jump up and down first thing in the morning saying, I'm awake, I'm alert, I'm alive. You don't probably feel like doing it with lots of enthusiasm. But when you do it, you feel enthusiastic. So our, then our minds follow. It's like your mind will follow your, your body. You're right. Action is so important. You have to take action. That's for sure. I think the, the, it's really interesting because I, I said to one of my coaches once, I said, well, I keep thinking, you know, I keep, I have this thought, like, what if it doesn't work? And so I flipped that, just like you said, I flipped it to, well, what if it works? And she was, she was great. She said to me, she goes, Joy, that's great. And I'm really glad that you were able to flip it. She goes, but that's not a strategic plan. <laughs> and I, I thought, oh yeah, that's a good point. Like, what if it works isn't really a plan? And that's where the action is. That's where the action it matters. You know that, okay, so let's shift the thinking from what if it doesn't work to what if it does work, but then you can't just say, what if it works? You got to take the steps to make Absolutely. it move forward. It's like, who do I need to call to move this forward? Another tip that I learned from this coach, which I love, and she's, I mean, she is by far one of the most favorite people I've ever worked with. But her, her other thing is to always hold this or something greater still. And that was very powerful me, for me recently when we were trying to also close something and it was taking forever. It was a loan for a, um, some property rebuilding and stuff like that. And it was taking forever, forever, forever. And the amount kept going down, 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 down. And, and, I, and then I remembered this or something greater still. And I thought, well, maybe, maybe the good in this failing is that there's something better. And it yeah. turns out that within two phone calls, right? I uh -huh. picked up the phone, I messaged somebody, I called. Within two phone calls, we had a much better solution for a lot more money so that we could move forwards. And that was a perfect example of sometimes when you look at something and it's not working out, but you're holding out for it to work out. Yeah, then, tell me about it. Yeah, then the other <laughs> side of this is maybe there's something better. Thank maybe you for that. That's a really good tip for me at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, this or something greater still. Maybe the thing that I'm really supposed to be doing is greater than this thing that's that. here. I, I love that. I mean, because we can it can render us helpless. So this really links into so so for me, what I've really discovered, not discovered, I've just rediscovered, if you like, the that sense of uh, empowerment. And I talk to a lot of companies and a lot of individuals um, around the gender you know, so many of us women, and I may ruffle a few feathers here, but I'm just going to challenge this anyway. So I can talk about all the challenges I've had and all the reasons and all the excuses why I haven't succeeded because, you know, it wasn't the right time or I've had this happen. I brought a child out of the sun on my, on, on my own pretty much. And, you know, I can, I can talk a lot about all the other things that have, have held me back you know, why I haven't been heard or and can't be seen. And I talk to a lot of women and I, I hear this and I say to them, well, so what can you do about it? Because so many companies and so many environments say we are empower our women to step up and to be heard and to be successful. We've empowered our women. I'm thinking, what does that mean? You've given them the authority, the permission but actually, who's taking that? And I, for one, had to recognize, too, over the last few years, that actually the only person who can empower myself is me. And empowerment is about taking charge of my life, taking control, being not the victim. And I'm not suggesting we are all the victim, but, but, but make it is an easier a word empowerment than dare I say responsibility so responsibility if I said now it's your responsibility you are responsible then we often kind of go well hang on a second I've got so many other things are holding me back but me well I, I, I'll just throw something out here because <laughs> again I heard this recently and I was like this is so powerful if you flip responsibility and you say it's your ability to respond I like that right? It's your ability to yeah. respond. This is so, you know, I know what you're saying with responsibility, but I think the responsibility is that you have the ability to respond. You have the ability to take an action step. And this goes back to what you're saying, you know, as well in this empowerment thing. Um, the other day I was, you know, again, I was looking at these situations that I've got to deal with. I've got about three or four different ones going on. And I thought, you know what? I'm powerful, not powerless. 
Yeah. I am full of power to make a decision, to move myself forward, to do that phone call, to send that email to, you know, and it may not work, but at least I'm taking a step forward. Yeah. And I think yeah. when we remember that we are powerful, not powerless, that's where the empowerment comes from. When we yeah. remember that we have the ability to respond and we don't have to be vegetables and who can't respond to something, we have the power to respond. We have the ability to respond. And that is very, very important when you're going through uh, a transformation because yeah. the transform, the, you know, the, it's like climbing a mountain. You know, yeah. I remember in Switzerland, we used to live near a big mountain called um, Pilatus. And uh, apparently Pontius Pilate was buried there. Now, whether or not that's true, I don't know, but that's what the mountain is named after. And you have to go through this very dark period of climbing the mountain, dark, cold period where you're in the, in the forest and you're climbing up this mountain. And it's actually not that challenging, but it's just dark and cold because mm -hmm. there's no sunlight and you're going through the trees. And then suddenly <clears throat> you get above the tree line, but it's usually pretty cloudy because you've got the, you know, you've got the clouds. Too. So now you're out of the trees, but now you're going up this really steep part that's rocky and hard to do. And I remember doing it pregnant and I could do like 10 steps and then I had to stop and then 10 steps and I had to stop. And it was just like the gravity was pulling, pulling, pulling. And then you had less oxygen because you don't have the trees and you're above the tree line. And so, but you still can't see above the clouds, but then there's something magical that happens when you get over the clouds and you're mm -hmm. at the top of the mountain and you're mm -hmm. no longer fighting gravity and you've pushed through the cold and the dark and the trees and the, you know, and all this, and you see this magnificent view that goes on for miles and miles and miles and miles because you're above the clouds and you just, and you see the sunlight, there's nothing in the way and you have no more pain and no more struggle. That's the transformation. Yeah. And that, but you can't get to the transformation without doing the work. And that yeah. work requires one step in, in, in front of another. And I think that's what I love so much about you and your story and why I wanted to come back and refilm this was, you know, I, before I knew who Mel Robbins was, before I read her books, you're the one who introduced the three, two, one rule to me, you know, and I love that. And there've been so many times, like when I've just wanted to do something simple, like <laughs> jump into the lake and I don't love lake swimming. And it's like, three, two, one. Okay. Three, two, one. Okay. Three, two, one. And I might do it 10 times, but eventually I jump into the lake or whatever it is. But I think, you know, you're, you've got you. And I knew the minute I met you, you were such a powerful woman. Um, and, uh, you may not have owned it at that time, but you certainly own it now. And, and the work that you do with women is incredible. And I, and then, so I'd like to like, you know, come back to the story because we sort of have had this wonderful uh, conversation about that transition period. And now I want to talk about this transformation that you have had. Uh, you know, you did the three, two, one, you did the phone call, you took the action, you moved forwards, you've, and you've launched this new initiative and, and tell us where you are on that mountain. Have you got to the place where you can, you can, you can, you're above the, you're above the, the, the clouds. You can see the, the sun and the blue sky. I can see, I can see the top, but I'm not there yet. And it's a journey and I'm learning all the time and I'm confronting myself the whole time. So I am, I think what I've, what I have had to do. Okay. So this is probably the key to everything for me right now. Well, apart from the action part of it, which is, and I just wanted to touch on that because I so know so many women um, will hold back. We do. We think we have to be perfect. We think we have to kind of think things through. We have to hesitate and dwell and ruminate and all that kind of stuff. And actually, the only way to build confidence is through action. And it's so I, you know, having the courage to do that is is the most important thing beyond that. OK, this thing about authenticity. So here's where I'm at. I'm changing my profile picture on LinkedIn. I'm changing a lot of the, the kind of image that I've worn the masks. I've, and I wasn't gonna talk about this, but this is part of empowerment. And actually this is where we sometimes hold back because we don't wanna be seen, we wanna be seen to be good enough, although we don't feel it. So the lady in the mask, and I've met her and I can't remember her name, but she's lovely, she's amazing. But I've worn a mask all my life. I've worn lots, actually. I take them off and put them back on again. I wear the armor uh, and I put it on. And what I've discovered, and I've made myself, laid myself a bit bare recently, 
is that actually that doesn't inspire people. It doesn't reach people and it doesn't help me because everywhere you go, there you are. So, you know, if you want to be the best for you and be authentic, you have to be that with yourself first. And I, uh, so that's part of the journey that I'm on is, is being brave to be me. Yeah, well, that is so important. And, and we talk at Tech Pixies a lot, especially in our self-paced superhero boot camp, about taking off the invisibility cloak, right? Yeah. Who am I? <laughs> and what do I stand for? What are my who, values? And who do you think you are? <laughs> yeah. It's that is such a key element in this whole thing because if you don't know who you are and you don't know what you stand for and you don't know what your values are, it's very hard to uh, be authentic and um, you know, I think there's a, there's a great book, um, that I have called valuable by a guy named Mike Jennings. Uh, we have a great podcast episode we did with him, which was all about values, company values. And then actually, how do you find a company that has your same values and why values are important? Um, but it's really interesting because, uh, because, because knowing who you are is so makes it so much easier to be authentic. And, uh, and I agree 100% with you that being authentic is the way to go. Um, it certainly has become a much better thing to do uh, in marketing in the last few years. And, uh, and, and certainly I think as we've, you know, really as the only way we've been able to connect with people has been online the last couple of years, um, you know, normally you and I'd be in the same room talking, yeah. but you know, we're doing this on Zoom still in 2021, yeah. but, but this is now how we connect with people that we don't know, or people that we can't be in the same room with. We connect this way. And, mm -hmm. you know, if, if, if you have the, the perfect hair and the perfect nails and the perfect background and, you know, and you don't have the kids running in and out, like, yep, I think what we've yep. learned is authenticity matters. It, it really matters. Yeah. And it's how to be authentic is the thing. And that is something I do work with women on is how do we reveal ourselves and be powerful in that? And there was this nugget that I talked to an organization about, and I talk with other organizations about a lot. And this is this, this idea, this paradigm that us as women, we feel that often we aren't heard, aren't seen, but we're stepping into a man's world of business the whole time. So there's this kind of stepping into a man's world. And so I get the comment of, um, well, you know, do I need to, why do I need to feel the need to to act like a man in a, in a meeting, to speak aggressively or, you know, or I'm accused of this. And, and a lot of women like me, I mean, I've done this myself, is feel as though I've got to step into this masculine persona. So here's the thing that I truly believe that we've got to shift is if you've heard of the third alternative with Stephen Covey, and he talks about, you know, conflict resolution and various other things in this book, it's a brilliant book. And it talks about you like Sauvignon Blanc, you like Chardonnay. I like, sorry, I like Sauvignon Blanc. You like Chardonnay. We both like Pinot Grigio. So let's drink the Pinot Grigio. And it's a similar thing in that rather than thinking we've got to step into this man's world or they've got to step into our world, we can say, what does the shared world look like? If we could wipe it clean and have this middle ground, we say we both step in, male and female, what would that look like? And who do we need to be for it? What do we bring to the table? Then we can start feeling less, ina less inadequate as a woman. Do you, do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah, I totally hear. I mean, I just, I, as you're talking about that story, I was thinking about this time that I took a couple ladies with me to a board meeting and uh, we walked into the board meeting and all the men around the table had white shirts uh, and gray slacks, gray suits and like different color ties, I guess. And maybe they were even the same color, but they all look the same, white shirts, gray suits. And we walked in and we're like, you know, we're all in our Tech Pixie kind of bright colors, you know, outfits and we're there ready to do business. And, you know, I've got red on and someone's got blue on and, you know, the other guy had probably green on or something. But we walk in with all of our colors and, uh, and so we, you know, lit up the room. And anyway, I remember leaving that meeting and one of the gals in the car looked at me and she said, the last time I was at a meeting like that, I was serving the coffee, wow. you know, and it was like, welcome to the table, girlfriend. And I think, you know, I think there, I think you're right. It's, it's this navigating, you know, navigating this world. I, I this is one of the reasons I'm passionate about women setting up businesses, because mm -hmm. I think, you know, if we can't 
uh, shift the work environment within a business, which obviously is ideal for people who love working as in, you know, they don't want to be an entrepreneur. But for those of us who are entrepreneurial and want to set up businesses, by leading the companies, we're able to create a new environment. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, that's, I think that's, that's really important. And I, I know, you know, just going back to this kind of confidence issue. Um, I love the book by Jennifer Allwood and it's, um, it's called fear is not the boss of you. And she has a, she has a quote in the book, which I just, I, I have branded it on my heart and it says, um, mm -hmm. you know, confidence comes from doing something you've never done before and realizing you didn't die. <laughs> and I think a lot of what you're saying, it t t ties into that is this ability to, to do something. And also, I just want to talk about the top of the mountain too, because mm -hmm. here's the deal. You get to the top of Pilatus and you want to go to Everest, right? Yep. Just because you've reached one mountaintop doesn't mean that there's not another mountaintop. You want to, in fact, that is human nature. That is actually yeah. the law of the universe. The universe we know right now is expanding at all times. Yeah. The, the, the law of the universe is expansion. So there is nothing wrong with getting the top, getting to the top of Pilatus and going, actually, I like the view from here, but I'd love to see what mm. the view, you know, from Everest look like and going yeah. for that. And, and then you go, actually, I'd love to see what a view from the top of the mountain on the moon looks like. Right. right? Okay. So, so it's, yeah. it's human nature to get to the top of the mountain. And then actually, yeah. I want to go see what the you top should of the know, is because like. you're an athlete and you do that. You set a goal and then you kind of go, was well, that it? Now I need to do another one. And, and how, and, and that's, that's part of being your journey as well, hasn't it? Yeah. And one of the tricky things about being an athlete is there does come a time where the peaks can't be higher than the previous peak. Yeah. So then and you have to find a purpose. Yeah. It's and then you have to a, yeah. less of a mission. It's more of a purpose. Yeah. You and not, don't have to do anything, but you know, isn't that part of that? Well, I like the way Jessica Ennis Hill did it. She said, this is my post mummy times. Like she went for her, her best post mummy times. Right. And so right. I think, you know, I think what happens when your body physiologically changes, um, then you have new goals, you have different goals, you, you know, and you're looking, but you can always find improvements wherever you're in. And maybe it means changing sports and starting new, you know, who knows what it is, but the point is, is that, you know, the athlete, the athlete analogy is good. There is a point yeah. where most athletes can't keep going. I mean, if, if people could keep going forever, they would be, but then you've got incredible stories like the iron nun, you know, this woman in her eighties, who's a nun and she does iron man's right. I mean, how crazy is that? And that's just yeah. someone who said, I have a dream. This is my dream. I'm going to pursue it. Yeah. And it's not yeah. about getting faster times. It's about getting, you know, being in her eighties and finishing an iron man. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I kind of haven't won those things that you have. And one of the things that really engaged me, because I think one has to, this whole thing, uh, so women are so, I say I'm tending, uh, this is generalizing, of course, but how us as women, we kind of get lost in our families. Perhaps we kind of get lost in the, the here and now and are not as goal oriented, perhaps as some men, for, perhaps. But, you know, what I've seen and what I've discovered myself is that the power of a purpose as opposed to that something outside us it's bigger than us it's not about me and I think women feel more comfortable when there's a sort of sense of how it's going to impact the world and because we do need to inspire ourselves in order for us to to face challenges to have the courage to to step out of our comfort zone otherwise why bother you know it's a great place to be it's a com lovely place to be isn't it a comfort zone but it does nothing grows there so if we're going to actually to 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 want to achieve something and fulfill ourselves you know if we've got the why you know it's going to help us to get out of the comfort zone and step forward and and make those changes and try something new and i think that's you know i just encourage women to find that purpose in themselves that's bigger than them i think that's such a great point and i remember when we did this conversation the first time you know, one of the things that I talked about at that event was how it snowballs. You know, you do one little brave act and then you have the confidence to do another brave act and another brave act and another brave act. And before you know it, 
what you're doing 10 brave acts down the line, you would never have conceived from day one, but now you're 10 at 10 choices down the line. And you're like, wow, the, the choices I made 10, 10 times ago, I could make now with my eyes shut. Yeah. And it's about, and it is about getting out of your comfort zone and becoming comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, and it is about push. I don't know anyone. And I'm sure you have so many similar conversations to the, to me. You and I don't know anyone who's stepped out of their comfort zone, put themselves to uh, uh, out on a, on a limb on a, you know, to do something that has regretted it. You, exactly. Yeah. You always learn something from it. Even, you know, failure means for all I have learned, uh, you know, you always, always learn something from it and you can always move forwards with it. Uh, and now you have knowledge you didn't have before you have, you know, I mean, we, we put up a workshop and we just, you know, we thought, oh, a couple people will buy it or whatever. No one bought it, right? <laughs> Not a single person bought it. And it's like, okay, well, let's do another workshop and let's do another <laughs> workshop. And you just keep trying until you get one that does work. It's adjusting the rudder. Yeah. You know, constantly to, to, you have to be brave to do that, Joy, don't you? You have to. You have to to be clear and 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 have faith in where you're going to, not what you're going through, and and adjust the rudder as you go. And but I think you know, it's important, so important to inspire yourself, to become your own inspiration first, and to then do things that inspire others will come as a result of that. And I think if some some women are watching this or listening to this, maybe thinking, well, who am I to do this something? Who am I or, or, or can I, but you know, who, um, what's my purpose? Well, I kind of asked my son once, who inspires you? Who's your inspiration? He said, you mum. And that really got to me because I recognized that if I had just, I had not shown him that I was willing to go out there and test myself, put myself out there and overcome. What message does that give to him? And I saw my mother not do that. And she only inspired me more than ever when she got on a plane once and went to Tibet on her own when my father had passed away. And she climbed and in her 70s and did a trek for miles and miles and miles. And I was so impressed for the first time in my life. And I think that's what... Us, you know, for women, we've got to recognize it's, you know, to, to put ourselves to pursue a purpose and a dream will not Absolutely. only inspire the women around us and other people around us, but our, our children as well. Absolutely. And I think when we're talking about dreams, you know, the dreams that are in your heart are going to be different from the dreams that are in my heart. Yeah. And that's because we have different experiences. We're different people. We have different genetics. We have different makeups. We've, you know, and the thing is, is that the dream that you have is only given to you because you're the person who can fulfill it. And the question is, am I going to lean into this dream or not? And the, the, the reality is you wouldn't be able to dream it if it wasn't something that you could do, if the resources to do it weren't already in you. And, um, you know, I, I, and we can close on this because I think this is a really great thing. It's not a question of, uh, is this, is, you know, am I worthy to do this dream? It's, is this dream worthy of yeah. me? Is it worthy yeah. of me? Because many, many times we, we need to flip that. It's the dream has come to you. Is it worthy of your time and attention? Uh, and, and that's the question you have to ask. Not, am I worthy to do it? Because if it's come to you, it's picked you. This is yes. your dream. This is the life that this is. If, if, if the idea has come to you, it is meant for you. You mm -hmm. have to decide whether or not you want to pursue You have to it. listen to it for sure. Yeah. And then trust that instinct to go heart first decisions. Yeah. 100%. Well, let's just sum this up and being brave. Uh, you need to listen, like pay attention, notice what you're noticing. What are my thoughts? How can I shift those thoughts? What action can I take? Three, two, one, what action can I take? Yeah. Ask yourself the question, what's the worst thing that can happen if I take this action? What's the best thing that can happen? You know, if you're really struggling to push through and remember that confidence comes from doing something and realizing you didn't die and, yeah. you know, and then, and, and go come from the dream. Don't create the dream. The dream's already there. Let's figure out how we're going to 
find how we're going to find our pathway there. What, am, what What's the one step I can take today, tomorrow, next week to move towards that? Uh, and I think people are on their on the right track. Um, Tamsin, where can people find you if they want to oh, connect? Lovely. You? Thank you for that opportunity. I love this. We could go on forever talking. So uh, they can find me at uh, rawtalksacademy.com. They can email me at Tamsin at rawtalksacademy.com. And, in, you know, come and join that community. You know, come and see what's going on because it's all about confidence and courage and influence. How do we be heard? So, yes, that's uh, the website. There's a lot going on at the moment. So look forward to it. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank Enjoy. you. We appreciate it. Great to catch up.